from the great halls of their house, there are assembled three who hope to one day be the world's greatest driving heroes. Created from the cosmic legends of the universe comes our team captain, the Vision, Bill Fisher. Their soon-to-be Wonder Woman, Vicki Fisher. Our Captain Marvel and head flight trainee, Jennifer Scripchuk. And our Batman, the master of tools, gadgets, and all things mechanical, our mild-mannered soon-to-be billionaire, Alan Danvers. Their mission, to fight injustice, share what is right and wrong, to get you out of your house and come out racing with them, and serve all mankind. They are the Garage Heroes in Training Team. Captain's Log Supplemental. Miss Vicky. Yes, sir. You know what? What? You know, I've been thinking about this Sentinel system. Yeah. Tell me about the Sentinel system. So what I was thinking was we have the one car that's got the aim dash that's slowing us down. Because mm -hmm. installing the aim dash is actually it probably is easy, but it's quite hard the first time. And we haven't figured that out yet. The Sentinel system is really easy to set up. So what I was thinking was, why don't we put it in the uh, Lemons car and we'll worry about the AIM data information separately and we'll, we'll kind of break it down into a project because then we'd have the motorsports video system that we really, really want and we'd be able to stream it. We just won't have all the data inside, but we have the data X outside so we can combine them later. But I think that's a really good solution. So what does the, what does this uh, Sentinel system do? Well, w if it had the aim data, it would have all the data on the screen and you could see all their telemetry and everything live. But we'd be able to not only record it for viewing after the race, but we could actually watch our car during the race. Ooh, like on the monitor and everything? On a monitor? Or if you were at home and I was at a track or if you were at the track and I was at home, you know, depends depends on who gets the little short straw, but we'd be able to watch each other. You know, it's something I've always wanted to do. And you know what? If you're driving, you know what you can do on the aim, on the Sentinel system? What's that? You can communicate to me with your hands and I can't do a thing about it. <laughs> Even better. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, if you need to give a wave or a jersey wave, whatever you need. We could save it and see it on the screen. And then you can have up to three different cameras and it'll have picture in picture. You'll have the basic main shot out the front window and then two cameras where you put them wherever you want. One could be on the driver or one could be on the rear view. It's kind of cool. Then we can upload it onto YouTube. We could. We could bore millions of people on YouTube. I love it. All right. Very well. You know what uh, the only downside I see about this? But your mom and my mom are going to be panic stricken the entire weekend watching this thing to see if everything's going well. This is true. We probably shouldn't tell them. I like the idea of having a sentinel. Mm -hmm. Well, luckily we have them. maybe two. Depends on how things go. We're going to try. All right. That sounds like a plan. That's the sounds, project. We got to get that ready sounds, for the next race. Sounds great. All right. Very well. Thank you, ma'am. Miss Vicky. Yes. You know what we need for dominating with Dawson? Uh, do you know what? I think we need to mix it up a little bit. What? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Uh, well, since we're uh, we're taking over dominating with Dawson this week, we have a guest. Dawson? That doesn't sound right. But anyway, we have a substitute for Mr. Dawson. Blake, welcome to the podcast again. Thank you so much. It is fantastic to be back on the podcast and interacting with you all. I am super excited to be here and will do my utmost to fill the very large and mis misshapen shoes of <laughs> Mr. Dawson as we discuss dominating in a way that he might approve of. Does he have Sasquatch feet that we don't know about? Oh, yeah. I mean... His feet look like the the keep on trucking guy that from uh -huh. the sticker there, you know, where he's <laughs> kind of coming the at big you. toes sticking out. Yeah. yeah. Like, oh my Do you know goodness, what? What is going we on? We should with that? get that and put Blake's head on it. 
I mean, I put um, Dawson Ted on it. That would be awesome. Yeah, yeah. I mean, awesome. I, I I have seen him using his weird paddle flippers, uh, you know, <laughs> putting on his race shoes in the paddock, and it's hard not to comment on it. You know, you don't want to draw attention to it, but at the same time, it's like, Ooh. wow, man. So when he says he'll tell, we know which toe. Is that what we're right. saying? Absolutely. When when he's left foot breaking, that's mm-hmm. he couldn't help but do anything else. That's mm-hmm. all the yeah. foot breaking. Yeah. <laughs> Every time that clutch goes to the floor, brakes go on the floor, throttles go on the floor, everything in the car is going to the floor for those battles. <laughs> all right. Well, well, our topic for the evening is is somewhat related to Ben Dawson's toe. Indeed, apparently, yes. Apparently, apparently. So we're on a racetrack and we're talking about braking. Usually Everybody gets all wrapped up in threshold braking and sometimes he even applies it in the wrong spot. But, you know, let's let's go with braking in a car with ABS and how to use it properly versus bad ideas. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I do think it's a bad idea to just stick your tongue out and mash the brake as hard as possible and let the ABS do the work for you. Does that include when you throw the shaka out the window just to let everybody know that you're doing it? Is that still frowned <laughs> That's upon? right. Okay. You, you, you've got to you've got to have the shaka out and just mash and break the floor and let the electronic electronics do all the work for you while you outbreak everybody in the field and look uh, glorious in so doing. Mm-hmm. If I was better at Photoshop, we'd have a picture of Ben doing that. Right, mm-hmm. right. Yeah. I mean, so with the with the ABS systems that I have had familiarity with in racing, not one of them has been what I would, would describe as particularly great. Hmm. That I, would, I, would, I would that I would hang my hat on and rely upon in place of skillful threshold breaking where that's appropriate. I would, I would kind of agree because I, the way I use it, and I'm not sure it's right, we'll find out what your opinions are, and Miss Vicky as well, is when I get into a threshold breaking area and I feel the ABS come on, I know I overdid it. Right, yeah. The, the computer has now stepped in and is making decisions for you, and while it can certainly pulse the brake pedals faster than what you could, humanly could, mm-hmm. as to... It's initial decision-making in so doing. It's a matter of how the ABS system is tuned. And like I said, my my experience, and I have certainly not had much experience in very high-end racing machines, because if you've ever seen me, you would probably know why. But in any event, it's it's been my experience that the ABS comes on typically a lot sooner than what I would have otherwise wanted and it comes on sooner than what would have been fractionally close to the wheels locking up in substantial fashion that it would would greatly affect your braking if you were just doing it manually so one big thing is that the abs outside of the rain and 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 other other surface impactions which are a separate topic but Dry track, ABS, for my money, it's probably coming on too soon under normal race conditions. Or it hmm. upsets or it upsets the car. Indeed, yes. Yeah. Miss Vicky, hmm. um, yes. most of our race cars have not let let me rephrase that. Most of our race cars either do not have ABS or have an ABS upon which you cannot rely because sometimes you have it and sometimes you don't. But I know some of our HPDE cars you've gone in in have ABS, and and have you uh, explored using it and not using it? Well, I don't really know about it, but the feel of it, so maybe. Oh, Um, Mike, we have something to talk about. But we always try to make a habit of turning it off when we get in. No, no, that's that's something else. That's traction control. Oh, okay. Then I don't really know. I don't really know the sensation one way or the other. All right. Yeah. The the mistake, the sensation of the ABS kicking in is usually very abrupt and unmistakable because you'll be applying the brakes using your right or left foot. And all of a sudden, the brake pedal will start firing back at you very rapidly and hmm. loudly as the as the ABS mechanics begin pulsing 
the stopping pedal. effort. Right. Oh. And, and so it pulses okay. the pedal. And so as you're as you are just pushing the brake down normally, all of a sudden the pedal is at war with you and it's mm-hmm. going to Oh, it's, it's it like, rumbles. Uh, it's it like rumbles. Thumper, thumper in right. Bambi. Yeah. For, for the Disney fans. Yeah, I think I think I do know what that feels like now. You do. And, and so, so some of the problems that are endemic with ABS on track cars that have been adapted from the street and are not pure racing systems are they have uh, things like ice mode. Yes. Have you ever, have, have you ever yes. been driving uh, a, a race car that has been adapted from a street car and suddenly the brakes go into ice mode? Yes, was, that's was, the feeling. Is that 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 that? No, nope, right. nope. Ice mode's different. Yeah, no, ice, mo- ice mode. I, I mean, had it happen I, once. It's scary. Right. Yeah, t- talk about it, Bill. What did happen? Not much. Right. I I, I wanted I wanted brake, and my car decided no, I don't care what you want. I'm not giving right. it to you, and I had no brakes. Exactly. Really? Exactly. Yeah. It 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 assumes that you are on sheet ice and so it delivers next to no braking effort as you are holding the pedal as hard as you possibly can to try to effectuate that and wow and that's that's one reason why this topic is somewhat fresh in my mind is when i was racing with a team at um, AER at pit the uh, vehicle had abs but it also had this ice mode that was still active in the system Mm-hmm. And so the ABS would would be effective in straight line braking, but as soon as the car detected that there was a any sort of yaw happening while under braking, mm-hmm. it would trigger ice mode. And okay. at that point, it was like you you were on an oiled surface. Yep. Oh. And yeah, before before my mind actually caught up with uh, the circumstance, that's I I think I'd even called it in. I was like, man, there's a huge oil slick and turn whatever, because I'm I'm holding the brake down, ABS is going nuts, and there is no stopping effort happening. And wow. out was was simply the the ice mode that was kicking in. So okay. That is, um, uh, having ice mode being triggered on your ABS in your race car is a way to not dominate whatsoever. No, and it, I'm not sure if it's, I know there's some cars that have the ice mode engaged for various reasons. Some haven't even been fully defined yet, but they, they are known to exist. But I think the the things we do to cars on track in terms of roughness, uh, you know, we we drive them pretty hard into a turn. We we do things that you know is not a standard public road encouraged activity, and sometimes the computer just gets lost. And the last thing you want to do is be pushing right up to the limit, and then your car sit there and say, you know, I don't think you know what you're doing. There's no way you're doing this, and you really need brakes. So I'm just going to give you ice mode. <laughs> right. And uh, yeah, it had it happen to me going into China Beach at Mid Ohio, and that was uh, probably the scariest thing I've ever seen because yeah. it's just like, oh my, this is not oh, going to yeah. be good. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, I'm not going to be able to slow down for this corner, and yeah. we're going to find the limit. Whether we go above it or not is up to the big man upstairs. So, right, <laughs> right. yeah. So that's that's foremost in my mind whenever I'm guest driving a vehicle. It's none of the none of the cars I've ever prepped to race in have had functioning ABS. So we've just had to set that aside. But what's definitely fresh in my mind is whenever I'm, I'm being an arrive and drive or guest driver with someone else, if it has ABS, talk to me about ice mode. Is it still engaged? When is it going to happen? Because I want to avoid it at all costs. <laughs> and, and for the home game players, I uh, I subscribe to way too many YouTube channels, as Miss Vicky will attest. And yes, uh, thank you. And Driver sixty one slash Overdrive is is one of the actually those are two different channels. But anyway, he did some testing. He's a former uh, professional race driver out in England or Europe at least, and they did a test to see if a normal driver could outperform an ABS or he could outperform an ABS being a, a race car driver. And then the normal driver was able to get close, but the ABS was still better, but the race driver was able to consistently perform better. I've seen other channels with different information, but I, I think I think if I were to say from a physics standpoint, 
you can probably do better than ABS by just staying under it. The hard part is staying under it as you continue to slow. So don't rely on the ABS as you progress and as you get better, because you can actually do slightly better than an ABS if you're skilled enough, trained enough, experienced enough to read what you can do and can't do and, and uh, stay right on the limit before the ABS clicks in. Would you would you hold the same theorem for not in the rain rain slick surfaces? Nope, rain rain the ABS wins. Right, it, it's just I don't know how at least to the level that I've gotten to, which as low as it is, whatever it is, no, I can't I can't keep up. And I've I've heard other racers disagree, but I've also heard that ABS even helps some of the the best racers that I know. Right. Yeah, yeah. If you are, you know, when I was racing mostly in California, wet weather wasn't often an issue. But uh, being Shanghai, the Midwest, and racing here in the East Coast, South, et cetera, et cetera, I mean, not sound like George Carlin, but there's like a 50% chance of rain every day you're out at the track, <laughs> here, seemingly, right? So, Unless you're at Mid Ohio, uh, then it's 100%. It's going to figure it out somehow. Right, right, right. So, you know, the um, uh, it's a little disheartening to be out there and not have it and see these other drivers who might be the subject of certain aspersions being cast their way, who are just sticking their tongues out, mashing their feet, you know, the, their foot on the brake and letting the ABS do all the work in the rain and completely out braking and out driving you as a result just because of the system. But hmm. given the choice, would you want to have the car have ABS or no? Good, good, good question. Absolutely. Yeah. If it absolutely. Works. Yes, absolutely. I think I, if if you have a vehicle that does not have ABS and you're going to be racing in surface impacted conditions, you're just not going to be able to hang. So, so you've got a choice between race car A and race car B, identically prepared. One's got ABS, one doesn't have ABS, and you're going to take it out for a season. With the racing that you do, which I believe is mostly endurance racing. That's correct. You want the ABS. That's correct. Yeah, okay. I want the ABS. Even even if the if I'm going to have to take a certain time penalty in the drive because I'm my braking skills might be better than what the ABS otherwise would permit because the mm -hmm. ABS is kicking in. I mean, typically what we would say is the ABS is kicking in too soon, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, but, you know, balance that out with how much faster I'm going to be in the rain with it versus not having it. It's just, it's, it's not much of a, um, of a difficult decision for me. I would definitely go with the ABS. So Miss Vicky, hmm. I've mm -hmm. got an idea. I got an idea for you. Okay. Next time we go to the track, especially mm -hmm. in an HPDE and mm -hmm. one of our, and in quotes, one of our decent cars that has ABS, I would like you to go out there when you're out there by your lonesome, nobody right behind you, I want you to hit the brakes as hard as you can. Okay. And feel ABS. Like if you're going to normally stop at the four board, that's where you're going to mm -hmm. stop at the five or the six. Jam on the brakes as hard as you can and feel where the ABS is. And then for the rest of the weekend, you should be just a little bit softer than that. Okay. Because you're giving up braking efficiency. Right. And you'll be surprised what your car can do. Okay. Okay. I like it. Yeah, that's um, that's that's really the only way to um, figure out where the ABS limit's going to come in and how you can drive around it. And not be scared by it, because that's even worse. Right. Right. Yeah. If you're not if you're not used to what the ABS does, uh, yeah, for the first time it comes on, probably terrify you. Yeah. I, I if I given my druthers. I would prefer that everybody listening and everybody in this world experience ABS brake pedal modulation on a track versus on the road when you're hitting it for a very good reason, usually a deer or some other idiot driver. You want to know what that feels like because it can actually scare you to get off the pedal because you think you broke something, which right. is exactly the opposite of what you were pushing the pedal that hard for. So 
Indeed, yeah, yeah, that's exactly the thing. You know, another good thing about ABS with brake with with race cars is, you know, doing these endurance events, you in, inevitably have guest drivers, mm -hmm. people who aren't super familiar with your ride, maybe who aren't super familiar with the track, et cetera, et cetera. And it's just a little bit of insurance that way, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. Uh, flat same spots. Thing. Exactly. Flat spots, right? You flat spot a set of tires. That's expensive, and it's embarrassing. Mm -hmm. Not that I've ever done it, but I understand for other people who have done it, it's been extraordinarily, Rumors. Yeah, Rumors extraordinarily uh, embarrassing for them. And I mean, one way, one way that I avoid not uh, flat spotting the the tires is by just rarely engaging the brakes because I need to be in the faster run group, and I only drive flat out. Yeah, well, I mean, brakes just slow you down, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's equal to you never know the wall's there until you hit it. That's right. <laughs> How hard is the wall? Don't know. Never hit it. So it's fine. Right. So as as we're determining, Bill, as we are on track and we are making a determination as to when the ABS is going to kick in, mm -hmm. which wheels typically lock up first while we're under braking? Uh, in, in my, in my well, history. it all depends on where the brakes are. The well, front my brakes are on wheel. all wheels, but you know, I drive fancy cars. <laughs> Not the yeah, Fred well, mobile you're the driving, fronts, apparently. right? <laughs> yeah, the, the front brakes go off usually, right? And it's been my experience that the rears typically lock up first because the, the weight is lighter. Is, yeah, the rears being the weight's being transferred off of the rears, and it's lighter back there during the braking event hmm. if you're facing the correct way. You know what I'm thinking, Blake? What's that? I'm thinking Miss Vicky doesn't use the brakes enough. She's apparently very nice to the brakes because she has no idea about any of this. Like, what's any oh like brakes? Which ones lock uh, up? I, I'm ready for this year. Right. Yeah. Now that <laughs> now that she can run a machine shop and knows how to <laughs> thoroughly rebuild Honda engines and transmissions, yes. uh, we're going get, to get her out behind the wheel and um, get her really aggressive with the brakes. I know. I know. We might actually have to change brake pads. Who knew? I, you know what? I really wouldn't mind. It's been a long time, and I've been working or trying to get an instructor in the car to... I'm, I'm right here. I know. But just to do braking exercises. Yeah, no worries. That's, I think that's one of the big hangups. Yeah, so, absolutely. Uh, so before we wrap this one up, I want to have a public service announcement to all our listeners. If you wish to listen to Vicky talk on and on and on and on and on about her engine uh, rebuilding progress, it will be after <laughs> the credits roll on this episode. So nice. if you hear the credits and you hear another 15 minutes or 20 minutes of, of podcast available, choose wisely. <laughs> It was a big learning experience for me. Lots of ahas. That's right. Speaking of ahas, guess who just came in? Hey, how's everybody doing? It's Ben yeah. Dawson. Guess what we just it's did me. without you? What'd you do? We did it, dominated with Dawson. That's awesome. I'm so happy. That's we, so we were <laughs> we were Dawsonless. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's great. Well, All right, say right. goodbye, you everybody. Right guy in there. Say goodbye, Bye. everybody. Bye. 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 And that's a dominating with Dawson with almost it. no Dawson. That's, that's <laughs> the best way. That's the best kind to have right there. Right. We did uh we did uh thoroughly discuss your disgusting feet. Oh yes. cool. Oh. There, and, there and you're apparently yeah. very large thumbs on your feet. Yeah. Your weird <laughs> Apparently flippers. you apparently you're the equivalent of the keep on trucking guy. <laughs> All right, yeah, that's me. That's, cool. that's why I'm able to heal toe so easily. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> you know I'm feeling, so. Yeah, I'm feeling he's kind of like a like a Ben and Jerry hippie with the pretend there's a microphone. trucking guy. There you, there you go. There's a microphone. <laughs> you can't make hand gestures a on a non video podcast and b. Yeah, with the yeah, yeah. Hand. Move on. All right. All right. Boy, give me a break so I can something. edit this thing.
Looks like uh, you guys had an engine build happen there, Vicky. Mm-hmm. Well, we obviously we blew our engine at the last race of our personal season, which is Connecticut uh, Thompson. Mm-hmm. And it was a slow moving whatever. And it was a, a D series um, Z16. And Chris Abbott had given us, he upgraded to a K on mm-hmm. his Honda, a K series. So a K swap. So he gave us all his D series Y8s. So we had three engines, enough to make two good ones. Okay. So I sent one out to the the metal shop, um, the uh, the machine shop to go get, you know, go get done and get cleaned up. So we did that, emptied the whole thing out, sent the the base and everything to go get it, and then he he was he was nice enough to put the stuff around the crankshaft, camshaft. Uh huh. Okay, so that's the upper part where the head is. Right. So that was in there, but we pulled that. Chris Chris Abbott came up, and then we started assembling it. So we were able to kind of change out the camshaft because it was broken. Um, they had a couple pieces that were missing, but Chris was up there, and he just Chris Abbott since he he's been working on these things since he was like 16. Right. So he's Honda man. And he Mr. just, Mr. Honda, Mr. Honda. Honda. Yeah. So <laughs> we sat around for a weekend and he showed me how this thing went together. Put on a clinic Indeed. for it. Yeah. Even and I, I have, understood it, Blake. It's amazing. I, I have to tell you, it is not complicated, but the couple things that I learned from him was that go slow, be precise, and, and don't assume anything. Check everything and right. then check it twice before you do it. And then you should be okay. Because I was just like, oh, yeah, well, if the machine shop cut these rings and, and you know, the first two are fine, I'm assuming everything is fine. He goes, don't assume anything. Yeah. So we checked everything and he wow. told, you know, so I learned, you know, how to put when you install the pistons and then we installed um, bearings, which we expanded on the bearings in there. So we had no more balls. oil flow. Not all bearings are balls. That was the saying of the day. Not all bearings are balls because <laughs> I was assuming they were balls. Mm-hmm. So um, that would have been a great title. So anyway, we learned how to um a uh, family friendly podcast, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so we learned um I learned how to expand the bearings that go around the I always get the crank and the camshaft mixed up. So crank crankshaft is, is lower, camshaft is upper. So we we widened all those bearings and the proper stuff to use and uh and then how to set the pistons when you're working on it. So we got all of that done. And then we disassembled the transmission and we took out uh, the differential and put a limited slip differential in, which Mm -hmm. I know what that is now. Mm -hmm. And then um, we had some difficulty with that. And what we did learn is that not all bases, like when you're switching out parts, not all bases can be the same going into that are at the base of the gear uh, spindles, Mm -hmm. the gear stacks, Mm -hmm. because we kept getting just enough to where it would just angle out. We couldn't get the head back on. So, or the, or the, the casing back on the bell. Yeah. We couldn't get the bell back on to get it fitted. Right. So, so we did that. And now when he left, we basically had uh, the valve section, the valve cover section was built with the, camshaft and then the lower half was put together with the pe- the pistons and the rods and the crankshaft but nothing else was assembled so that's when me and alan went in and we just started putting everything back together mm-hmm. and big takeaway biggest takeaway now is that i'm walking around in the shop and i know what all the parts are and where all they go now and what they do. Right. That was the biggest. 
that I was just like, oh, because because I was doing inventory at the same time because we have all these parts from all these bits. And I was able to look at what a bad part looks like and what a good part looks like. Mm -hmm. And we were inventorying the original Honda ones that were still good used parts and get rid of the old stuff. And I'm like, oh, I know what this is. Oh, I know what this Holy cow. Mm -hmm. And that that was just a big eye opener, big eye opener. So uh, I got real excited about that. Nice. Yeah. So, I saw a uh, 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 Scott McMichael showed up and. Yeah. Yep. We'll let anybody up there, Blake. Yeah. My gosh. Yeah. He yep. was up and he was working on the, what was he working on, Bill? Knuckles. Yeah. He, we were trying to, we had a bunch of knuckles we were trying to do. Oh. Hey, so I don't want to interrupt your your fiftieth time going through what you learned. Taking I part love in this. I learned I, big eye opener. Big okay. eye opener. So we have an opportunity that we may choose to accept. 